What's up, Zox fam? Now, we're going to be getting into our overall tier list, and we got a lot of adjustments to make here. Um, we're going to be actually replacing and adjusting the units that are currently in the game, and as well as placing the newest two five stars and newest four star unit on the tier list as well. Uh, this is going to be vastly different because we do have the Divine Gate system to also take into consideration. So, there is a lot to go over, all right? So, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we have been doing and we're going to be starting from the bottom all right so uh, we usually adjust from the top to the bottom but uh since we got so many shift ups we got to do uh we might as well start there all right so we're starting in the c tier we're going to be moving up first we're going to be moving joser okay so joser i'm going to actually be placing joser in i would say s tier um i really do feel like he has a lot more value now because he is single-handedly meta now for a bet um he is definitely a really really solid unit for what he's able to do with his adjustments it actually gave him the two things that you actually need the most to be successful in a pep and it's a defense break and a disease which is in his passive just to kind of sum that up his divine gates are actually pretty solid too so again he does have that value overall for ritual miracle and even for people that are spending you more than likely will see a joser on that team comp he's just a fairly easy unit and he just has more utility specifically adding to that now another unit that we're going to also be shifting up is meredith okay so meredith also got an adjustment as well uh, meredith actually now is able to grant a speed up to the entire party and they also kind of slightly adjusted how her hp scaling dps works um so when she hits one enemy it also will uh factor in 50 percent of her hp as well as 30 percent of uh, the uh, max HP of the enemy. So you're now seeing it a little bit differently. It was based off of, I think, like attack before, but we're gonna actually shift her into S rank as well. Um, so this actually gives her a lot more usage and utility outside of the fact that she is also able to grant defense up and crit resist. Um, and then as well, being able to heal an ally in that same skill. Uh, and then she's also going to be able to dispel buffs, uh, which is really nice too, right? Um, now, another unit we're going to be shifting up, and the only reason why I'm shifting him up is because his Rezo's kind of fixed an issue with him. Now, this is if you get him to his full resignation. Uh, Erlis, I'm going to be shifting him up to A, all right? I, I think that this would make him a little bit more comparable for uh, freeze comp teams. Um, he does gain the ability to where he is not going to remove freeze when he is max Rezo'd, which it's just kind of like... I guess, but <laughs> it's like it's just one of those things where it's like, all right, I guess so. We're gonna give him, the, we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here. Um, so yeah, definitely a high in value for freeze comp teams. I would definitely say at max rezo, which is just kind of one of those things where it's like, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, still not a unit that you're probably gonna be going too crazy uh, for, but definitely something to consider, right? Uh, now in the A ring, we got some huge, huge shift ups that we're gonna be making here, and I'm gonna do the honors of doing this and i don't care what you guys got to say about it we're going to be uh shifting up sun wukong back to triple s okay sun wukong like i'm so happy about this his divine gates absolutely soared him through the freaking roof um uh, i will say it allows him to do what he does already uh, even better. Um, and they added pursuits to his kit. He's able to hit an additional enemy now, which allows him to be able to proc more enchantments. Um, so it really, really honestly raised the bar for him to be a newbie character. Um, and still, in my opinion, I honestly think he's just vastly better than Luling. But I digress there. I mean, just honestly, though, his value is definitely there and he is kind of ridiculous now considering he has the elements that we wanted so bad that Tang Yuan had um, that honestly made Tang Yuan so good. Uh, Tang Shuang now has that same at, uh, aspect, but he is able to hit so many more units. Um, and yeah, it, it is ridiculous, right? Moving on, we have Donar, all right? Still <laughs> sitting him in the A rank was one of the most painful things that I had to do, but I'm going to gladly say we are going to be shifting him up up to 
double s all right so we're going to be placing him in double s for now um reason being though is that he did get a significant shift in his kit with his divine gates uh so his thundercrack passive uh, is now going to allow him to gain an extra turn when he reaches his max stacks um and then of course he is going to have a scaled increase in dps when his defense is actually higher than um his uh, opponents and then on top of that he is going to with his explosions in the sky he's going to be able to reset the cooldown for the thundercrack passive um which then allows him to gain uh two thunder blessing stacks and for those that don't know what the thunder blessing stacks do uh they give him 20 percent defense upon taking damage and that will stack up to five times and the thing is is that when he retaliates he's scaling off of defense anyway so he's getting a crazy amount of defense scaling so i definitely think that he deserved a shift up for sure uh because he definitely holds and has that value all right um so now going into our s tier all right so i would definitely say for the most part the other units eh, they're all relatively still the same for me um going into s tier though we're going to be seeing a a massive shift up here uh and i'm actually pretty happy to do this shift up i'm actually going to be moving cecilia uh up to triple s um in a lot of ways and this is where uh the argument is going to get really good okay who do you guys think is better now I, either clara or cecilia i am going to argue that i think that cecilia with rezzles arguably has a better kit now um she definitely is really ridiculous and i'm gonna say the next rta swing around that we get uh cecilia is going to be a problem now for some of you guys that's wondering why that is it's because cecilia now her passive is now an active skill so that wasn't a part of her divine gates that was actually just a part of um her adjustment that she got so now she is able to revive and or heal um and yeah and heal whenever she wants right now keep in mind uh she is already able to dispel ally debuffs and grant immunity to all allies for a turn as well as healing them based off of 25 percent of their max hp but now she can revive and then heal them again and then also ap boost them whenever she chooses to do so so it's no longer just procking based off of her death it will still and can still proc offer when she dies but now she can actually utilize this whenever she chooses to do so um so this ends up being super super freaking broken um because again this now is going to allow her to be able to reset and get cooldowns a lot quicker and if she's able to get those cooldowns then yeah that's gonna be a real pain in the neck to deal with so cecilia definitely is getting a shift up without a doubt um absolutely deserves it absolutely deserves it at this point now, next up, we have Jin Yu Yao. That is going to be our next unit we're going to be shifting up, and we're going to be placing her into double S. Now, with her Divine Gate, she actually is going to have a lot more value because of how she already operates. But then when you add these, this just is really freaking good for her. Um, so you're going to be seeing with the Mount Kulan's Blessing passive she has, she's going to be getting an AP boost um, increase by 50%. And then at the end of her turn, she's also going to be able to dispel uh, one debuff. Now, now, the other thing is, is that when you get her to divine gate six when an ally uh, is being inflicted by a cc uh, her ability cooldown will be reduced by one turn and this will trigger once every turn so this ends up being like super ridiculous because again like the number of units that can cost a cc is just like <laughs> it's like almost every other unit so you're now talking about even if the set is being utilized which is a tyranny of zeus she's going to still have a lot of value in those scenarios which is really freaking good right um so slap her with the uh astral witchcraft set and yeah gg <laughs> absolutely gg now uh, another unit that we're going to be actually shifting upward and this one is actually quite surprising for me is actually going to be zora now we're going to be also placing her into double s the reason why i say this is because with the um update zora actually has a lot more value now um she is actually pretty damn good in chronos which i was not expecting that to be the case but yeah she's actually really good in chronos now and again for when you're looking at her divine gates she is then able to with her divine gate two she becomes able to defense break um on top of that uh she is also able to gain a increase in her uh basic ability i think after she uses one the next one that follows 
goes up it's a 30 percent increase in that so that's more damage um and then on top of that when an ally attacks this is her divine gate six zora has a 15 percent chance of assisting with keen edge uh, for those that don't know keen edge is her s1 which also allows her to be able to proc um the disease but also restoring hp to herself so it is actually a really really i i would say a high increase in value of what she's able to do that defense break makes a huge difference in where you can place her and then on top of that the follow-up attacks that's just more dps now granted it's rng in that but hey all I, I how i look at it is a, a clear is a clear so you you really can't go wrong with that to be quite honest right so that's pretty much that now um with everybody else that is in um the s tier i'm still gonna leave catherine there now the, the dilemma i have with catherine is catherine was like nerfed um for shadow i think it was or one of the deso bosses why well, i don't know i think it was shadow gal but either way um she was nerfed i think she or adjusted i gotta double check on that but um either way um definitely a unit that i would say still holds value for what she's able to do um so i'm gonna keep her in s for now uh when we're looking at some of the other units that are here um i definitely want to reconsider uh elliot i, I think elliot is still he, he's he's a unit that i don't think a lot of people really are too familiar with because of how he operates but i will say that i think that he is going to definitely see a lot more value in um pvp i'm still going to leave him in s ring i would definitely say the biggest thing coming out of his divine gates was his um r6 which makes his pure enlightenment ability not able to be resisted um and that is just again when you're looking at uh what that ability does it's able to extend all ability ability cooldowns on the enemy he hits and as well as dispelling all their buffs so that actually becomes a really really good ability for target isolation for pvp um but i guess that is another thing that you'll have to kind of work out in maybe certain scenarios where in pve that would be okay to use or work well um if a uh i would definitely say got some decent um adjustments with her divine gate her divine gate is not like super out of the way when you're talking about like making a unit super super god tier the problem is is that right now with poison units because poison poison should be definitely more effective on things like uh chronos for example um but they just aren't right now so we're kind of waiting to see what adjustments happen there uh in terms of what would make them more effective uh because the same thing with meredith meredith used to poison and now she doesn't so that's kind of why her value now shoots up um if a i still am gonna leave her in s tier because i do think that poison is still very much so effective in things like sentinel hunt um etc etc uh but she isn't going to be seeing a shift up this go around now a unit that we are going to be touching on for shifting up is going to be brewster a lot of this also has to do with the fact that the newest unit is in the game too uh, and i'm going to kind of talk about that as well but brewster actually is going to be shifting up to double s for me um i will say within his given attribute now that attribute advantage does matter now uh he is going to be a very very dangerous unit to have to go up against because of the fact that he is able to follow up the way he is um the thing too with him is like i said the new unit um they can actually be utilized together which is a huge huge plus uh and how these units actually operate uh, and then again brewster does have some really really solid dps so that's another thing that i think is worthwhile considering there um but outside of that that's going to be pretty much that for the homie brewster all right now um one unit i want to also mention here as well is going to be uh hercules i feel like hercules again is kind of sort of still in the same predicament he could definitely do a lot more damage but i think that still places him or leaves him in the s tier so he can still do a decent amount of damage but it's again for what he got on his divine gates uh he's able to gain shield so it makes him a little bit more survive uh or sustainable i would say so that is good but outside of that it's you know not going to be too crazy now one drop we are going to be doing is going to be jacob uh jacob is going to be getting dropped and i, I i'm unfortunately going to have to drop him to b tier I, I don't feel like he has any real style of uh, so solidified spot anymore um he used to work extremely well in a pep it just now is not a thing so he unfortunately is getting shifted down um maybe something in the future will open up for him to be more useful uh but he de definitely is not 
um, of high in value anymore, which just kind of sucks. Now, um, another unit that I feel like does have a lot of value for free to play is going to be uh, Berenice. I'm gonna keep her in S tier, but she is like borderline double S for me because of what she's able to do. So I think that that is still a thing to consider. But again, that is just one of those things that you know you just kind of have uh, out there. Now um, going into double S here. All right, so we finished all the S. We're getting into our double S shifts here. Uh, double S, God. <laughs> We got a unit that we're going to be shifting back up. It is going to be Sally. Um, Sally is absolutely a must shift up. Uh, she definitely, uh, for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure, with her adjustments, with her divine gate, absolutely is insane. So we're going to be shifting her up to triple S. Uh, for those that don't know what her divine gate is going to be doing, uh, it's going to be allowing her to be able to heal our allies when using her universal now, which is her HP balancing skill. Uh, she's also going to also give, right? This is the other thing. When an ally is CC, she can give them 15 speed, which is insane, right? But then on top of that, her old to joy uh, can now, uh, she's actually now able to take action instead of being immobilized. She can actually take action while using that. And then on top of that, she is able to gain Sweet Harvest for one turn at the start of combat. Uh, so, so it's just like ridiculous in terms of what they did for her kit. Um, Sweet Harvest, for those that don't know, is a 25% damage mitigation. So it's just for damage reduction. So she's able to start out with that now. Um, and that's at Divine Gate 6, right? So I want to I wanna put that out there. That's at Divine Gates, okay? But it is, again, very, very insane in terms of what that's bringing to the table. Um, I would definitely say that she's definitely going to be a extreme problem in pve and pvp i could definitely see that being the case so definitely a unit that i'm super super hyped for um now another unit that we're going to be shifting upwards is going to be aries i actually think aries deserves to be in triple s for his attribute i think they finally did aries justice i i think this is this is finally the time it's high high and nigh uh with his resos he actually is going to be a problem um so his flames of fury at divine gate 2 is going to be able to dispel all busts from a target um that he hits uh then when you're looking at um his divine gate four uh it's going to be when a target's hp is below 50 percent the damage is increased by 15 percent which when you're looking at how he follows up and he gets the extra turn anyway his kit that's just ridiculous to just give him that extra ad in his rage avatar so upon killing the target he then is now able to attack all enemies and the damage is 50 percent of the overkill damage which 99 percent sure there's going to be some damn overkill damage because it's aries we're talking about so that is just a huge huge shift to what he's able to do as a unit and i'm actually pretty like happy that they considered um doing this for him because he really was in a place for a five star it was extremely lackluster no one really wanted to use him um so this kind of does help out considering he is still squishy yes but i definitely think that with that this makes him a true true glass cannon which is really really nice um to kind of see that happening for him right now um outside of that I would definitely say um, a unit that we're going to actually be shifting downward is going to be Pandora. Now, I still will say, OK, she's still good. I still think that Pandora is good. I just don't think she's as good as she was before. Uh, she doesn't offer like the insane CCs that she offered before with her um where her prockings and her ability um she also got a reduction on how much hp she's also able to take away i guess they argued it was a balance but to be quite honest like for anyone that had her and or got her that she honestly was by far one of the strongest units in the game because she was able to do a 50 percent guaranteed it didn't it was 50 percent whatever the current uh, hp threshold amount of the unit was so with that being the case that was just kind of it is kind of a sad thing to see them take that away. But again, um, she definitely is a unit that has high in value for that. Um, she still does. She does pretty decent HP damage still. So I'm not going to take that away from her. Um, but even with the Divine Gates, it didn't really like give her anything out of the way, you know, to make her super crazy. Um, but she more than anything, that adjustment, I feel like shot her down for me personally. Uh, now, OK. 
let's get into some of our other units here we have uh scotty odette uh, we're going to be shifting her down as well um i feel like she is good for the fact of fusion <laughs> but i think in most scenarios where you would want to use her i don't think like she's going to be super super out of the way or super meta in cases um i think that what she does is definitely niche and it can work in scenarios with her being able to freeze with her cold armor um and as well as the other debuffs i offer i think it's a speed down attack down um so it's a really nice thing to have just to have it but um i don't think she's going to be like super meta out of nowhere for any reason unless there's another like powerful freeze unit that comes in and does some type of freeze procking damage scaling or something like that so yeah she's she's definitely going to get shot down a little bit now the next unit we're going to be actually shifting up is going to be sienna all right so sienna i do feel like she definitely deserves this shift up she got a really really powerful uh rezo change um hers are actually going to be giving her the extension of her abilities and as well um as giving her the ability to gain more speed um so she's going to be a lot more useful so her earth's blessing attack up and speed up is now going to be extended to three turns um which that extra turn makes a world of a difference uh, you're also going to have the wrath of the world on the divine gate six which is going to have the stun extension to two turns instead of one turn and then at divine gate four she's also going to be able to when an ability is on cooldown gaining an additional 20 speed uh which is the hasty action which is what was in the old um skill tree but it was only 10 speed so this ends up being super super disgusting for her because she already has the capability of being able to summon a random ally and then granting 20 uh, ap to herself but then on top of that now with the ability to be able to grant that attack up and speed up and then the zero out with the ccing and having that being able to last longer is going to be insane okay so, so most units ccs they're um especially stun usually only last for one turn hers lasts for two that is actually more than enough time to be able to kill an uh, opponent. You do some sort of strip into the CC stun. This is going to be ridiculous. It absolutely is ridiculous, right? Uh, now, on top of that, I would definitely say that we also have units like Abigail. Um, Abigail, I'm honestly... And, you know, Abigail, I, I feel like she's too good in too many ways to keep her in double S. I also feel like her rezos were actually really solid really solid so she's able to with her divine gate and we're going to shift abigail up to triple s2 i i feel like she has a lot of value <laughs> like not only in pve but pvp too um we're going to definitely be shifting her up uh so she is able to with her divine gate too she's able to um dispel all debuffs from herself uh with her divine gate four um when granting buffs she is able to heal for each buff granted uh, and that's able to restore up to 12 percent um based off the max hp and then you also have with her divine gate six which is the new queen's gift absorb is extended to three turns and for those that don't know what absorb is absorb is going to allow your allies to be able to restore their own hp uh so it restores hp equal to 20 percent of the damage that they deal so if they're a nuking unit they're going to be doing a massive amount of dps which is just insane right so i it definitely again a high in value in terms of what she's able to bring to the table um but definitely um a unit that i definitely think that she gets overshadowed a lot and she has a lot of value <laughs> like for real she really does um now with that we also have clara um who i'm gonna and i'm actually jumping over triple s real quick because there's no one that i'm considering shifting down at all they're all there we're gonna actually be shifting down clara unfortunately um she's gonna be in triple s though i still feel like she's extremely good do i think she's broken i don't think she's broken anymore i think she's actually pretty balanced now the dilemma and the question i asked earlier is who do you guys think is better now cecilia or isis because i really honestly think in terms of support it, there is a there is a god tier support in the game but i also feel like it is between it honestly is between cecilia and maybe ahmed because they're two different reasons but i don't know i don't know i don't think clara is like crazy crazy cracked anymore but i i I don't know you guys let me know i honestly think that she's like she's still up there but i definitely think that cecilia has a ridiculous kit now um and she's just she just does a lot she does a lot now for a team comp 
Now, real quick, I actually forgot about a couple of different units that honestly really did get some pretty amazing changes or shifts with their Divine Gates. Uh, the first one's actually going to be Everett. I feel like he deserves to be in Triple S for sure. Uh, he is a freebie shimmer that we're able to get, but he is going to be able to apply damage mitigation with his Divine Gate 2 to himself. Uh, his Divine Gate three or four i think it is is going to also allow him to gain more damage based off of how many buffs he has stacked and it could be up to 12 percent and then on top of that with his final divine gate he's going to be able to heal all allies based off of the damage he does 30 percent to be exact which is a pretty significant amount right so that is super huge to add to the equation when you're looking at you know what you could reasonably get as a free-to-play player um and as well as just that overall additional value to a team composition which is super huge now um again another unit we're going to be throwing up all right is going to be hide i could i almost i can't believe i almost forgot about this dude hide is actually um again he was already a problem but now he's going to be even more ridiculous he did gain on his divine gate too um he is able to uh have his breath of the deets be unexpired so you can use them in subsequent waves which means you can use them in the next wave they usually would reset and disappear uh now he is able to keep those and move on to the next wave um then again to play into his kit he's already a monster but the entire point is when allies die he gains those breath of the deep stacks now on his divine gate four when an ally is currently not alive he gets a crit damage increase of 40 percent which to any unit you could have given this to he is by far one of the best units to have given that to then with his divine gate six which is a reaper passive at the start of combat he is able to gain 10 breath of the deep stacks right off rip uh, and for those that don't know what breath of the deep gives uh, it is undispellable and it grants a five percent attack per stack and a three percent damage reduction per 10 stacks uh, and this can stack up to 50 times so he starts off off rip with a five percent uh, attack increase and a three percent damage reduction as soon as the fight starts and you don't even have to build uh work or buff or debuff him to be able to get those which is insane right now um on top of that we cannot forget <laughs> we cannot forget to mention another unit that i honestly feel like probably has some of the better uh rezo changes uh out of out of all the units uh for the shimmer shimmer attribute i would say uh we can't forget the homie Unis, okay? So, Unis, we're gonna actually be shifting him up for his respective uh, attribute. I'm gonna say he's got tier. I feel like he definitely got a ridiculous freaking uh, rezo change. So his new effects on his uh, R2 um, is going to be uh, Gale Force. So it grants attack up to our allies for two turns. Um, now, for those that don't know what ability that is, that is his S3. So it was just AP pushing you before, but now it's going to be granting attack up. Um, and then on top of that, he is also able to defense break with his S1. So it already is a thing with Unis already being a pretty decent damage but now he grants the attack up which is just going to be more damage now um upon a crit there's a 20 percent chance of dispelling one buff from the target now keep in mind his s1 hits three times so yeah gg with that um uh, and then his new effect on the follow the wind so upon a crit all allies ap is increased by five percent now what makes this so broken is again his s1 hits three times so if he's crit if he crits three times with his s1 that is an additional 15 percent ap that you could be seeing coming from just unis alone on top of the 30 percent that he already gives which is insane right and then to top all this off if you have a max skilled up this dude literally is also going to have his s3 on a three turn cooldown and then you're also still getting the immunity coverage with this and as well as the haste speed that he gives himself which allows him to be able to get his turn a lot quicker okay so we got that out the way now we're gonna now place the newest units here uh now the newest units we have the fatum sisters uh the fatum sisters i'm going to actually be placing in i would say honestly triple s i feel like the fatum sisters offer a lot of value they're able to aoe uh pushback um they're able to aoe heal um they're able to single target ap pushback um and then the crazy thing about them is that they seem to be like 
<laughs> they were definitely made for the adjustments and changes that were made to Kronos. Um, they're able to proc miss up rate with their uh, divine gates as well. Um, and then that's again, they're able to heal more based off of the buffs they give. Uh, and then they are able to also, uh, with the um, change that they get to their divine gate six on the trio of destiny, the AP reduction takes effect uh, in both hits. Uh, so that allows them to be able to further AP push even more. So they're really, really solid. I think that we were looking at them because of how they were released with t um t was released and then it was like ah they got released too and it was like they're the same unit but in a lot of ways absolutely not um they definitely have a lot more value because of that i would definitely say t is definitely good but i do think that the phantom sisters holds a little bit more value and they have a really ridiculous speed lead for uh ritual miracle um desolate lands is 35 percent increase right so that is absolutely insane for that piece of content respectively um so i definitely think they hold that value there now the next year we're going to be placing is yun chuan um i'm actually going to be placing him in double s for now i feel like with yun chuan the biggest thing with him is that he doesn't really have his kit opening up i feel like until he's at divine gate six so it is going to require you to have duplicates of him for you to make that happen now the other thing is too is that do i feel like he's a necessity not necessarily i mean he could do fafnir pretty solidly um i feel like he's just going to be a problem in certain aspects of rta or pvp um but i really do think that he's kind of limited to those things um i think he still is a valuable unit to a account honestly i really really do but i think we might need some more things within the game uh maybe some comp uh content to really like really see that value and the other thing too is like i was mentioning before is that him and brewster are actually going to be a really disgusting pair because their follow-ups work with each other um and you don't have to worry about that being separated or you can only use one or the other or only one procs like they both get those follow-ups which is really insane when you're talking about opening up the door for extra potential damage so i definitely would say yun chuan is definitely a really really good dps unit um but he is not a must-have i feel like right now uh now with that the last unit we're going to be placing is going to be sobek uh sobek i'm going to actually be placing in i would say s tier i feel like for what it's worth he's like a budget raven like he he really is i, I feel like for what value he brings to an account he is able to um, do a couple of different things. He's able to dispel um, all buffs from a target that he or all targets that he hits with his uh, S3. And then he can also proc disease. Um, he does have the ability to be able to CC stun uh, and as well as doing a defense break. Uh, and then he can proc bleed on his S1. His divine gates are actually like uh, pretty decent i feel like um he is able to um when he successfully is dispelling or stealing buffs uh he is able to inflict hp ceiling decrease uh which is a nice thing because that's you know permanently removing that uh but then also with his double slash uh he's able to on divine gate six when the target isn't buffed he is able to do a 10 percent damage increase so he's not super crazy cracked or anything like that um but he definitely does see a little bit more value there um but yeah that's pretty much that i think the only other unit i can think of off the top of my head that i will say i am tempted to shifting up to god tier out of the supports is actually going to be ahmed i i honestly think i might but and it's really because of the fact he's the only unit in the game that can counter hp ceiling decrease and there's no one else that can do it in the game so that is just a huge huge thing right but that's pretty much going to be that with the tier list um again guys like i said there was a decent amount of shifts here um is this tier list perfect by no means there's always room for improvement so let me know what you guys think um and i hope that this was able to help we'll have some more videos coming in the near future further breaking down these units in a more isolated video all right so that's going to be that guys let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next one